All right, now this week on TV with Susie Coils, it got kind of good, y'all. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump right on into All American First this week. Whew, what to say about All American this week? We finally getting to what we've been waiting for since the first episode of this season. They are slowly but surely getting to what the heck happened with Spencer and Liv in Vegas. Like they they pinching at it, pinching at it, pinching at it, but they finally about to address it, I guess, hopefully in the next episode. But pretty much this episode was called Teenage Love and it really ran through pretty much each relationship. It started off with Spencer going to his dad's cabin since the first, this is his first time going to his dad's cabin since his dad passed away. So he went there alone and Olivia suggested that uh, they go down there to support him because it's his first time being there without his dad being alive. So hmm, one thing, Olivia suggested everybody go down there to support him. So they bring the whole crew, JJ, the girl from the vacation, Asher, Liv, Jordan, Simone, and Layla, and not Coop. And what got me with that was y'all all going down there to cheer up Spencer, but y'all not going to go stop and get Coop and Patience. And when I peeked that Coop wasn't there, I was like, oh, it's about to be something. Because later on in some other clips, they were showing that Patience was telling Coop like, um, well, you should go check up on him. He had his, his dad's cabin by himself and he ain't been there since his dad passed away. So if you're really concerned about your relationship, you really care about him, go down there and check on him. He really don't want to be alone. So mind y'all, Coop don't know that the friends were down there and the friends don't know that Coop uh, wants to, you know, talk to Spencer or whatever. So the whole, pretty much the whole episode go through. I think it's like halfway through the episode. Coop pop up like, oh, so this what we on. You got all your friends here at the cabin with you and you ain't told me nothing. So much for being here by yourself. And she like stormed out. And he like, no, no, that's not it. That's not what it is. I didn't invite them here. They just showed up. And she like, that's even besides the point though. I'm thinking like they showed up. You could at least call them like, hey, everybody down here if you want to come. Mad or not, we still homies. But Coop showing up at this cabin did them some good because Coop let him have it. And I didn't notice, I didn't realize her point of view until she said it. Because I was all like, yeah, she is the reason he got shot. La -da 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 -da. Whole time, he is his own reason why he got shot. Yes, he was trying to protect her, but she also told him to stop trying to protect her. Leave her alone. Let her do what she's going to do. But he wants to be Captain Saber all the time and got himself shot. She told him, let him have it. And then they ended on a note as if they're not going to be friends. And I'm just like, no. Uh-uh. That's not what I wanted for Coop and Spencer. I wanted them to face what they had going on head up. And then, you know, be good friends again. But it's looking like that's not going to happen. But besides the Coop and Spencer drama, it's it's a drama with Layla and Spencer, Asher and Olivia, and ooh, Chad. That's from Mexico. She just throwing up the pot. They all playing games and all of this stuff. They sitting in a circle playing, um, I don't know if it was Never Have I Ever or whatever game that was playing. I can't really remember. She making it real well known that her and Asher got to know each other really well over the summer. Girl, she, oh, oh, you didn't tell me about that time you did that. Oh, but you you left that part out when you told me all your anxious, secret childhood memories. And Olivia looking like, what? Girl, if you don't calm down. So then something happened and Olivia came and her was like, and I just think some people, uh, a little bit too close to other people's boyfriends and i'm period because girl first of all none of us know you outside of the fact that you just started school here with us so for you to be sitting up here acting like you know my boyfriend no not more than i know my boyfriend we got an issue sis and then from that point on everything just spiraled out of control spiraled out of control what i'm really concerned with is the episode went off and layla was pissed she said I'm only going to ask you this once. And please give me the common courtesy. 
and not lying to my face. What happened between you and Olivia in Vegas? And I said, ooh, child, it's about to get good because you know he ain't going to lie. He don't be lying to these people. He be telling the truth. So we're going to see what happens, baby. And this is all I'm going to say. Whatever happened between them in Vegas, Better be MFing good because y'all done made us wait about six episodes at this point to reveal this one secret. Y'all just penny, inching, niggling, damning us with this information. So it better be good because at this point, we don't even really care what happened. We don't be getting no more for real. We just want to know because it's been so long. Just tell me already. So it better be good because y'all wasted all our time with all these episodes to reveal this. So it bets to be good. But they are building it. They they are really building up the suspense for this moment with the therapist telling Spencer he actually in love with Olivia and all this stuff and everybody like they a little bit too close and this that and the third. They trying to put all these thoughts in our head, y'all. All these thoughts they trying to put them in my in our head. So this secret better be good or I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna write the writers myself and tell them they is full of it for that booty old secret they revealed. If it's, if it's a booty secret. But that's all I had on All American. So I'm going to go ahead and roll on into Sisters. Y'all, I'm done. I'm really done with Andy. I like, girl, what? So Gary pops up. Well, she, he didn't pop up at her house. She invites Gary to her home to tell him pretty much, I don't know what her purpose for inviting him over there was. But he came with his receipts. He said, I told you I was going to divorce my wife. Here's the signed divorce papers. I told you I was leaving. This, I was leaving. Here's my one-way ticket. Tell me to stay. I told you I'm going to get there because of my anger issues and all this stuff. And here's my therapist number. And then he says, here's a ring. I told you I want you to be my wife. This man proposed. And she looking out giddy gung-ho. I think it's something up because literally... A couple scenes before the one that I was just talking about, she was talking to Karen and Karen shop. And she was like, I, Andy was saying, I just feel like I'm behind. I should be married by now. And la, 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 la. Girl, you was not behind. And that's the problem with women. Some women today. They be feeling like they behind. They need to have a husband. They need to have kids already and all this stuff. If you ain't had your husband yet, you ain't had no kids yet, it's not your time to have it. Sitting here trying to rush it and be with a man that's abusive, aggressive, all of this other stuff, that ain't it. That can't be it for you, sis. He cannot be the one. This man then squirrels, squirrels, is that the past tense her word? He squeezed her. Is it squeezed? Whatever, I'm going to say squeezed. He squeezed her nearly to death. And she's sitting up here talking about some we can work it out. We can be together. No, y'all cannot. He is abusive. That is the, one of the first signs. And that wasn't even the first sign. He overly aggressive, overly jealous, always doing all this angry stuff at you. Not at the people around you, but at you. He's directing that anger at you, sis. No. And I don't know if she accepted his proposal, but it looked like she is. Because she's sitting up there talking some. Girl, go to H-E double hockey sticks with it. Go with it. So what I loved about the episode was Karen popped right up on them as Gary was leaving out the door. She said, oh, hey, what y'all got going on? Because, Andy, why do you got this man up in your house? You were so adamant about me not coming over here with you because you want to be by yourself and the whole time you want to bring this man over here for a wet. When we already discussed that she was done with him. Didn't we? Oh. So that, I'm just fed up with the whole Andy and Gary situation. They need to get that together or they need to write them off the show because I'm really sick of seeing it. Like, is it going? I don't care if it grows positively because I don't like the man. If it grows negatively, I don't want to see that. Like, I don't want to see a good sis go through abuse that could have been avoided. I really rather not see that. And as far as the other characters, Danny had some issues with Preston's sister. She don't trust her. I wouldn't trust her either after the whole debacle with his brothers. And now she at her crib. And it's like, Preston, come on now. You say she the good one, but 
she could very much so be lying to you just so that she can tell them where I live so they can come do something to me in this apartment. Or you, because they looking for you too. That's not smart. And Sabrina, I don't like that. Okay, I don't want to say I don't like the bang dude, but slowly but surely I'm sorry not to like him. At first, I did like him, but he just too adamant about getting to Sabrina apartment. Like he was too adamant about her going out with him to get some coffee and some drinks and stuff. And he like, it showed us for the next episode, like he asking her to go to her apartment. Boy, first of all, we work together. Second of all, no, you cannot come to my apartment. What is wrong with you? You think I'm cute? Cool. Can you come to my house? No, get out of my face. Like you're doing the most. You ain't even trying to make it seem like you want to be with somebody. You just want the draws at this point. That's what it's looking like. Or you up to something else. Because it's been, they kept bring they keep bringing up Alonzo as if he has some type of connection with Alonzo. Alonzo is the dude who beat up Maurice. And then Maurice turned around and beat him back. Okay. But I'm just trying to figure out what is his purpose. And Sabrina's just so slow, man. I just can't. And I'm not even going to dress Karen. It is what it is. They still ain't revealed who swiped her credit cards. So I'm like, okay, whatever. She still ain't been to the bank to for Sabrina to, you know, clear up who actually used the card. So all this stuff going on, you got time to pop up at Andy house. You got time to go to work, but you ain't got time. And you got time to go to the police station, but you ain't got time to go to the bank to get the proof of who actually swiped your cards. I don't like that at all i can't get jiggy with it but poor zach zach is still in jail the old police lady she actually did help him out this episode but baby i hope for tim can come through for him because he need help because he getting set up in so many different directions and he don't even know what's going on and for tim about to give it to hayden because hayden boy i don't want you why are you doing all this? You gonna set up another black man to go to jail because you want me and I don't want you? You're sick. You are sick. And I cannot wait for her to tear into him like a piece of steak. Because he need, he need to be read for filth and he needs, she need a restraining order or something. Because at this point, he's becoming too much for me. Block him out your life, sis. Block him. Block him out your life. Just let him go. And that's all I got for sisters. Um, Grownish, this episode of Grownish, I see where they're going. I think the actual love story of the show is not Zoe and Aaron. It is indeed Jazz and Doug. And I'm here for it, honey, because I love me some Diggy Simmons and I love me some Chloe Bailey, honey. Love it, love it, love it. I love to see their characters on the show. I love to see their storyline. They be going off all of the scenes that were revolved around them were hella intriguing cute entertaining i just love the way they're building their chemistry it just seems so real and i love that they got uh chloe jazz tapping into these other emotions as an actor like they trying to test like where she can go crying on the spot and all of this and you know come on with the acting y'all i love it but this week they talked about uh the double standards for like if you can be the gay or bisexual or testing of waters and uh, misogyny within uh the spectrum of sexuality pretty much um because it opens up with Vivek having a threesome with his girl and another guy because they was off some type of drug I think maybe like Molly or something and he was like she wanted to do it so I went along with it and he was like, yeah, I kissed the man. And Doug and Aaron like, what? When he told them he had a threesome, they thought it was all cool because they thought he had a threesome with two women. But once he said he had a threesome with a dude and kissed them, they like, oh, no, nah, bro. So you gay? And he like, no, I'm not gay. And they're like, how? You kissed the whole dude. I don't go around kissing dudes, la, la, la. He like, I did it one time on drugs in that setting. And I didn't like it. So that's all that happened with me and him. But they 
kept going on and on and they had this big old debate as they usually do on Grownish and they brought up some very valid points and oh they brought back Nomi Nomi is back on the show with her baby and Nomi had to come in and rectify the situation because she is the bi character on the show she came at Anna because Anna was like well yeah that do seem kind of gay because you're a boy and you kiss another boy and she hit her with the okay, do it make you gay that you was trying to kiss me last year? And Anna want to say, well, I was drunk. Okay, he was on drugs. Same situation. Double theater that y'all trying to throw on my mans right now. So she came, Nomi came and saved the day and got Aaron straightened out. And Doug and Aaron apologized to Vivek and they're back homies because Vivek was like, since y'all want to talk about my masculinity and how much of a man I am, I don't man in this house. And yeah, I get the out. And he put them out right on the spot. They're like, come on, no, man. He's like, no, get out. We need to be cool. But they saw it by the end of the episode. And I love how Grownish just brings up topics of discussion that are very sensitive these days. That was a good one because a lot of people have that same mindset. Like if a boy kiss a boy one time, that make him gay. But if a girl kiss a girl one time, that don't make her gay and all this type of stuff. So I'm glad that they had that conversation so that people can actually have these discussions at home as well. That's TV for you. And then last but not least, WandaVision. Um, on this episode of WandaVision... It pretty much took us on like a trail of how she how she did it, how she created this alternate universe. Um, Agnes, they showed who she truly is. She is a witch from the Salem witch trials, uh, from what it looks to me. And she was just trying to figure out like, girl, how are you harnessing all of this power? Like, what are you doing? Tell me your secret. I need to know by any means. So she forced her she forced Wanda to deal with her her trauma pretty much and showed how her her trauma evolved 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 and got her to the point where she exploded and created this realm to keep her last love alive because for, at this point we realized that she lost her parents in a bombing she lost her brother in like a war or something and then she was about to lose she did lose vision in a war again so she just couldn't take it and they showed us how she actually so here they trying to make it seem like she's not the bad guy because in reality she's not the bad guy here but she is the bad guy because she has all of these people under mind control and holding them hostage in this town just so she can create this facade so that she can keep vision alive but they also showing that hayward is the villain and they wanted us to believe that Agnes was the villain. But Agnes, Agnes is not really a villain. She just popped up on the scene because she peeped like, oh, how's she doing all this? Teach me. Or not teach me, but like, I want to know. And I don't really like that they trying to like let her off the hook for having all these people be held hostage. But I do like the fact that they're going to take down Hayward because he is the villain. They show us that she goes to the shield and is like, bro, where is my man's body? Like, I just want to bury him, but I went to get his body and he was already gone. And she was showing, he, Haver was showing her that they were trying to rebuild him or do this, that, and the third. And he was trying to make it seem like they were just trying to disassemble him because he's a weapon. And she's like, he's more than a weapon though. I don't want his body to use him as a weapon i want his body because you know that's my man what do you mean and hey we're just like no he's more to you but essentially he's just a weapon and i don't want you to bring him back online because you do have that power and all of this stuff and she's just like this disgusted with him and felt disrespected because don't disrespect him like that he is a person even though he is a piece of technology he's more than technology to me and what I did peep in the end credits is that they actually did create a new vision from what it looked like. They actually bought another vision online. And he's all white and he looks pretty evil. 
So I don't know what's about to happen at all, but it looked bad. And, but Agnes told Wanda like, sis, you're a Scarlet Witch. With all these powers, you got to be one. So I, what I think is Agnes is going to help her get her powers under control. She's going to teach her how to like harness it and properly use it so that she's not keeping all these people hostage possibly because they wanted to they want to make it seem like agnes is evil but i don't really think she's evil i just think she has a whole bunch of power she knows how to use it to her advantage and she needed wanda to know she mean business because if she came to wanda all nice and peachy she was gonna try to you know be like girl you can't tell me nothing i got more power than you type stuff so that's why i think they're going with it this episode wasn't really juicy to me it just gave us a lot of back history on wanda and it gave us a little bit of back history on agnes so i don't have much to say um that's it that's all and as always like comment and subscribe and you can suggest tv shows to add to the list and you can suggest movies for me to review as well and i will see y'all next week